Well, it is uh, just about 7 o'clock in the evening. It is 18 hours and 56 minutes into the 10th day of uh, September. And we're here vlogging once again. Uh, trying to get more of a day. Don't have to do as long as uh, uh, do, we did before. But typically, uh, the longer so-called discussion... Discussions. This is sort of a short check-in uh, because the uh, food came in, my deliveries came in. I've got uh, Doritos. I'm going to have in a bit while I'm doing the YouTube stroll. Um, I noticed in my no my my past vlogs that I've been editing, I'll start talking about something, then something comes to my mind, and I never finish the topic. And this is true of Carly Reese. I've several videos. I've talked about Carly Reese. I'm happy to see she's back. She's got a new vlogging style. It does take a while to change your style. You know, nothing works out automatically right right away the first time. You do have to spend a, a bit of time sort of redoing things in a manner that you wouldn't necessarily think you would have to do before. Uh, you think, oh, I'm, I've done this for so long. Well, every time you change your style, every time you sort of bring in something new, there's a bit of uh, adjustment to it. And she's got, got getting into being on, on online, and she's finding this, uh, uh, you know, that she likes the online schooling, which is a lot like what I do, because um, the research that I do doesn't have a particular end to it. Uh, as I said before, I don't have a night and I don't have a day. And it just kind of lines up with the school year in terms of how I do my work. Uh, and so now things are starting to roll along. But I don't have the 9 to 5 schedule. I don't have that sort of that certainty there. But I do have the more relaxed environment. There, There, there is less stress to being uh, at home and online than in terms of a place that's comfortable than it is to be in an office with other people around you. And so I think this is what uh, Carly is finding out, that, that, that it is more comfortable. She sees how much more productive she can be. Because uh, in one of her classes, she's already finished uh, the whole first uh, the first semester. So uh, but that, that, that says a lot in terms of, of how much time in school is wasted. So... Uh, no, nothing wrong there. Anyways, uh, I'm going to get back to my YouTube stool. I've got my food here now, and so uh, time to move along. Well, it is uh, two hours and 30 minutes into the 13th day of September, and so far things have gone well. <laughs> there has been no terrorist attack, and uh, I think that ship is kind of sailing on right now. Anyways, uh, this is a transition video. This is a transition clip. Uh, it's a refueling stop as well. Typically, uh, when I get wiped out and there's no vlogs for a couple of days, that's what's happened. I've been knocked out. I just haven't had the opportunity in terms of having the energy to vlog. Uh, someone wrote today as I was doing uh, the editing. I do the editing and posting every day regardless. That's my minimum. Uh, and they commented, and this, this, this is the Mephisto again, he's amazed at my insight. Well, the thing is, I've been doing this now for 30 years. Uh, it's, it's at least 20, 12 hours a day that's like this. I wake up from something that I dreamt about that sort of influences, this is what I talk about, gnosis, that influences my thoughts, my understandings, and I get up, I begin working. I continue working in terms of doing the study and the research until... My body is physically too tired and I can't continue anymore. That's usually uh, 12, 13 hours later. I eat at my research desk, and this is one of my research desks. I eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner here. Occasionally I go to my parents' house and, and I'll do the uh, lunch or dinner there. Uh, I've been doing that more often. That's what I've been doing the rise. I've been going over to my... Uh, oh. My parents' house, which is about uh, 10 minutes away from me, and so I'm able to do the road, road vlog as I go back and forth. So, uh, in my mind as I drive, that's my, my essay. There are two essays. 
one there and one back. Those are the verbal essays. And they're literally picked from the, from the top of my head. They're, they're, there are things that as I begin to speak, the thoughts start to flow, and you can sort of see how my uh, thought processes kind of work uh, by watching these videos. They're going, well, he starts off a little rough, and then he begins in, he gets into the topic. But at the same time, because there are, are issues that are underlying issues for the particular topic I'm talking about in the essay, it changes the tangent, the direction that the essay is going in. And so sometimes I don't end up where I started off because there's other information that has to sort of come in uh, before I can get back on to the sort of called the main topic of things. And sometimes you often forget uh, what you were talking about. <laughs> and so the essay, the coming essay, appears to be a little disjointed from the essay on the way back. But I said, these, this goes on all day long. This is what my day looks like. And it's exhausting. So some days I just get wiped out. And so the, the sort of the, this type of vlog, which is more of the typical vlog that you would see on YouTube, which kind of behind the scenes describes the day, how the day went and, you know, things I did and so on and so forth. This kind of falls off as uh, I get to a point where I really can't uh, function anymore. And it takes me a couple of days of, of extra sleeping to get back into order again. So well, today, uh, today and yesterday, uh, my observation in atmospheric physics, physics has fallen off. I haven't done the uh, outside observing it the way I should have done. And there's a number of consequences to this. But right now, I, I, well, I got up around, I think I got up around midnight. And I've been working for about two and a half hours now. Check the news, check the medias, my different sources. Uh, and found that there was no particular issue. So the predictions of Lionel LeBron for Lionel Nation and several other sources that I had, they were pretty good sources, they were pretty good sources, were wrong on the attacks on the United States. They, they, they were going to do a specialized attack on the United States. But the thing is, what, what, when they're bringing this out, is that you find that the papers don't always... Even RT has significant problems in terms of how they present information. So you have to be very careful with uh, what you're reading. You can't just simply ex accept it as it is. You do have to go back in because they talk about, oh, yes, 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 they were definitely sure that this was the FBI assured us that this, is, this was a Saudi attack. The problem is, if you go also go into uh, the later years of Obama and so on and so forth, you'll find that the United States, to an extensive degree, uh, really fund and arm Saudi Arabia. So what happens? We fund and arm Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia turns around and found, funds and arms all the terrorists we've been fighting for the uh, so-called war on terror. Uh, you will find the same type of uh, uh, operations uh, going on for the drug war. Well, why are we fighting the drug war? Because at the same time, we, in terms of a covert means, are funding the drug lords. And why are we funding the drug lords? Because we want to support various different juntas in in in, um, uh, in uh, South America that will give us our plantations. And well, well, we don't have slavery here, but we do maintain slavery elsewhere. Uh, the French do the same thing. The English do the same thing. They have their their their, their so-called territories, the older colonies that are still fundamentally they're, they're slaves and. So while well, it's not directly at home anymore, now it's uh, out of sight and out of mind. So, oh no, no, we don't have any slaves anymore. We don't do that, any, you know. That's all. That's all in the past. But the reality is, is that we still do have slaves. We still do have this uh, slave mentality, where you know, as long as we're reaping the benefits for it, it really doesn't matter. And of course, they create these sort of boogeymen, the, these the, uh, the invisible enemy. That we have to fight and sort of keep the government's going to keep us safe and oh you need all these things and you you know and so they keep the people in many cases in debt so that they have to pay the taxes they have to do this they have to do that and it funds a lot of people's jobs I mean why is the cri the environment such a crisis because we now have to fund all these scientists to go out and find and fight climate change and of course you have to pay your taxes for it. that's what the, what the carbon tax is all about.
that's how you're going to solve your problem. You've got to pay extra taxes. And this will solve the carbon problem. This will solve climate change, the extra taxes. Of course, this never really works out. <laughs> They've been talking about climate change now since 1990. It's 30 years on. Uh, they were expecting in 1990, for the, if you watch some of the shows, the pole caps would have melted in 1990. It's 30 years on and, and the pole caps still haven't melt, melted yet. So you kind of figure out, well, maybe something's gone wrong here. And and this is sort of the same thing with COVID, with, with, with the CVD. Uh, you know, they're predicting all these different things, but the predictions never ever come true. People walked around, saw, you know, heard about these hospitals on the news all being shut down, that they're being overrun. And Lionel LeBron walked, walked around with his wife and took a look at the hospitals, and they weren't they weren't full, they weren't chock a block, they you know, all the stuff, everything that we saw was staged. This is theater. It's not real. It's not real. But the thing is, well, then they go talk about Mockingbird Media. But the Mockingbird Media has been with us since uh, Edward Bernays. He's always had his people in there. And you look at the old history of the CIA itself. The CIA came out of the news industry. They were news people people. This is how counterintelligence and intelligence sort of evolved. So the thing is, is that we have a number of things that keep us moving from the one direction to the other direction. Of course, everyone wants to stand up and be the expert, and this is how things go. Is because you, you, in order to have a number of experts, you have to have uh, uh, various different issues and conflicts in terms of the verbal conflict that will begin everything else. So. Uh, anyways, uh, this is what goes on, this is what goes on in my mind, and this is how research is done, but it's done over 30 years, so it's not a short thing, my insight doesn't come through a short spurt, it's not that, you know, I'm after work, I'm sort of sitting down and relaxing and I'm doing my, you know, my weekend, weekend cruise into the things of the world, like, you know, Flat Earth or whatever, uh, whatever sort of fault your boat, uh, I'm doing this on a regular basis. This is my this is my work. This is what I do. I'm a researcher. I'm a scientist, and a large chunk of the stuff sort of comes into play uh, as I sort of move along. And so now I'm on last I'm on my last half hour of the YouTube stroll. I'm watching a family in Florida called Family Forever, and uh, I don't know what I'm going to do after that. So we'll see when it's happening. I should go back to bed, but. Uh, I don't know if, if that's what I feel like. Anyways, see you in the next transition. Well, it is just about uh, 2 hours and 17 minutes into the 15th day of September 2021. And we're up for a, uh, a transition period. It's a 2 this is a 2 a.m. Uh, pit stop. I am watching, uh, doing the YouTube stroll. I just finished uh, the Yowie vlogs, and they buried uh, one of the little kittens they've had. They're trying to uh, breed hairless cats, uh, you know, for those who are allergic to the fur, and so... Mm. But one didn't make it. And we have we have wild cats in our backyard in my area here, and uh, when the females have uh, babies, uh, have their uh, have their kittens, uh, naturally in the wild, I think more than half uh, don't make it, and so uh, you know you can have a litter up to six basically. Ugh. And the ones I know in my parents' backyard, only um, only two kittens were, were seen sort of coming to adulthood, and nothing more than two kittens. So uh, I don't know whether she had more and they died. And I think this is sort of death is something that sort of causes a lot of issues for people because we don't know what's beyond we don't really understand uh, fully we have no experience of this of what's going on beyond and, and, and it kind of the separation creates a certain amount of fear and anxiety and it, it causes us to do 
a lot of, in many cases, for a lot of people, were very crazy things because, oh, you only live once, and, <laughs> you know, they go out and do some very dangerous things, and go, boy, you only live once. Yeah, that's true, but the thing is, is what about your second life, you know? I, I, you know, there are things that, that are beyond us that we just don't know, and uh, do you want to risk the second life uh, uh, because you're not having a good time here, or are you going to sort of wait to see what happens and make sure that, you know, that you're heading in the right direction for the second life. This is the whole thing. And we have enough indications around us from basically uh, oh, the world of Gnosis and on the pagan side and even on uh, and more particularly on the Christian side and now I want to say this again once again the Western Christians the European Christians are not on the Eastern side of Christianity they're not actually Christians there is a, dis a sharp disconnect that puts them into the pagan Gnosis in other words Basically, the Russian Christians are pagans with a Christian face. That's what it is. I know a lot of people are going to find this upsetting because they, hey, I'm a Christian. Well, if you're part, if you're connected to historically the Roman Catholic Church in any way, or the Protestant Church, which was indeed connected to the Catholic Church, uh, they never separated themselves from the pagan uh, their pagan origins. And this is what caused the split. What caused it was not politics. It wasn't a political issue. It was basically that the uh, the Western Christ Christian Church uh, could never separate itself uh, from its uh, pagan roots. And it maintained this pagan perspective. This is why you have the Pope as the Vicar of Christ. Until today, a large chunk of what's going on today, I mean, in the... They haven't stopped their evil. They haven't stopped doing what they typically do. And so a large chunk of what you see going on today is, is actually very evil. As is the people, well, why can't we stop this? Why can't we, you know, get this some some degree of control over this? And it's because most of the governments are involved in this evil. They're, they're part of the whole uh, Roman, Roman uh, Holy Roman Catholic uh, uh, Empire, the Holy you know, sorry, the Holy Roman Empire. And these are the Catholics. As it has been going on since about 1000 AD, this is when the pagan Christians emerged. So they're, they're disconnected from Christ in terms of time by close to a thousand, by, well, a little bit more than a thousand years. So there, there really isn't a connection. And of course, they spent 700, the Catholics spent 700 years uh, forcing people at, at, at the point of a sword to convert. That was basically what we want to call it the first, first jihad. The, the Protestants did the same thing, and so we sit today with people who will call themselves either Catholic or, or Protestant in some form, this includes the Mormons, uh, who have been fundamentally disconnected from uh, Christianity. But if you look at what's been stated on all these different sides, is that you have to be a peaceful person. If you are not a peaceful person, if you're not a loving person, if you're not a person who has forgiveness, then you're not going to succeed in the next life. And it'd be sad to have the life here and not have the life that's eternal. We have a hundred years here, plus maybe a little more, a little bit less. Are we going to sacrifice every our, our eternal life for the shorter one? Some people seem to think it's worth it. But anyways, uh, I'm going on to, uh, probably it's our life, and then, then yeah, it's our, it's our life, and then uh, on to the Family Five logs, and I, may, I might head off onto one of the sub paths or, or, or more. So we'll see what happens. It depends on when I get tired again and need to go back to bed. But right now, I've had the... Uh, milk iced tea, uh, the milk tea. I have it in the form of a shake or a smoothie, whatever you prefer. Uh, and uh, it takes about an hour for it to really settle before I can go back to bed. Alright, so uh, 
see you in the next transition. Well, it's just a few hours later at uh, 3 hours and 49 minutes into the 16th day of September, 2021. It's Thursday. And I'm still in that very bizarre state. The body is so fundamentally exhausted it's uh, difficult to stand. Uh, and as I was thinking about different things and milling about and not really having a direction, uh, understanding that this is what transition is. The transition is, is the is the leaving of one particular point and moving to another. And I think is that unless you actually know where the other the other point is moving towards, where you're moving towards, or at least at least in many cases until you get there, it's difficult to know or or, or how to feel about what what you're doing because you're kind of in between things. And as I was there thinking about it, but what about my discussions on the uh, uh, summer, you know, how the summer has gone and so on, so on and so forth, looking at the uh, vlogs I'm just editing now, because they're about a month behind right now, uh, noticing that when I talk about Carly Reese, I really never really get to the point. Uh, I've been watching her vlogs, still I'm watching her vlogs, seeing her struggle with a major transition point in her life that I think most of her friends don't necessarily understand because she's at an end point in terms of her career. She has had YouTube all this time. And she had her friends at school, but it's always been r rocky because she was, you know, in many ways a YouTube focus. He, he, this is, was her focus. And, and so, you know, kids would tease you about things. things you know, that would make it very difficult. And you saw sort of the, the rockiness of her life in school uh, as a YouTube kid. But now, she's at a point where she's kind of in two minds about things. And at the same time, the vlogs are shifting uh, rather uh, uh, significantly, including all the family vlogs. All the family vlogs are sort of seem to be in a uh, crisis transition point. And this is because the United States itself is, is in a crisis transition point where the realities are being turned upside down. And no one really knows where, where anything is going. So it, it causes a bit of confusion. And Carly, in many ways, reflects this. She reflects, uh, even though she's you know 17, she's a senior, uh, she's in a senior more than one ways than once because... It's typically seniors who have these particular problems as they come to a point of retirement. That, you know, she's Carly has already lived her life in many ways. And it's difficult to transition to something new not knowing if the thing that's new is going to work out. And it's easier to be in a very comfortable position and sort of where you are in terms of certainty than to be in an uncomfortable position where you don't know where things are going to head up, head out or how they're going to work out. And this is sort of what comes to mind here is that it's, uh, you know, I took the day off today. I'm just literally physically, physically exhausted. I went outside to do some observation uh, 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 a couple of hours ago around uh, 10, 11 o'clock in the evening. I went out. I just fell asleep in the chair. I fell asleep with uh, this chair that it's, I have out. I, I, I put it up and to sort of uh, watch the sky and listen for the uh, for the train signals. Oh. And I just fell asleep. And but that's how some of these days go. Some of the days I have successes, and other days I don't. And it gets to a point where you have to take some time off. But this is the most difficult time. This is the summertime. And it's the most difficult time because I don't like sitting around doing nothing. And I think this is what Carly feels like. You know, even though she chose to do homeschooling, it's better than regular school. And I agree with, you know, homeschooling is better than regular school. But at the same time, as you've got these periods where there's nothing to do. And it's because you've reached a point where you've done so much already, you're simply transitioning to the next things, or next next thing, or the next set of things that the transition point becomes noticeable. 
and that creates a large, large chunk of problem. Uh, you know, uh, uh, it, it messes with your head. I think this is the altered state that I'm feeling. You know, it's like you know, it's like a guy, like like uh, called three a.m., four a.m. FOMO, fear of missing out. There's nothing really I'm missing out on, but the thing is, you wonder what else, what you know, what else has other other people done? You know, I'm here doing this and that. What are other people doing? I mean, I know logically, I know they're they're, they're sleeping, but I'm wondering if there's something else going on, <laughs> something that I'm missing out on. But I got this is this is the sort of the state that the mind is in. This is the altered state. And what happens as this happens is a lot of memories start rushing in uh, and you sort of, well, my whole life sort of plays itself out in different sort of uh, chunks, bits and chunks as, I, as different things uh, sort of, uh, and this is, this is, this is, this is the, this is the ramble. And it's been going for six minutes now, so. Now I'm going on to my next bit of pieces, uh, my, my next bit of uh, 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 chunk of the night, uh, the transition point. I'm going to have my che my uh, chicken sandwich uh, that I just made, and I'm going to watch some cartoons. Probably uh, it's going to be Kim Possible. So uh, I'll see you uh, probably sometime uh, maybe, uh, tonight for another transition point. We'll see what happens there. It definitely will be a roadblock because I will be going to my parents' house later on. But, uh, anyways, uh, see you then.